It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the AFC West. It's the Broncos and the Silver and Black, and it's all up next. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to Las Vegas, Nevada. Today, we've got a fun little clash in the AFC, as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis with you from our broadcast perch. And Charles, as we get this thing started, what are you going to be keeping your eye on? Special teams. Field position is always a big determiner in a ball game. Who sets their offense up for success the best? That team will win the game. Vegas. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. Leading them out, the fifth year Auburn alum got his first career starts last season. Here's Jared Stidham. For a brief time, he was thought to be a possible successor to Tom Brady while he was still in New England, but that didn't materialize. But opportunity may still knock for him to start in the NFL today. Definitely has the arm and mobility to make plays against NFL defenses. All he needs now is consistency. They start to drive on the ground. It's Williams. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Holding offense. All right, so they got that one, Charles, against the center. And let's remember how difficult it is for the center because, remember, he's got to snap the ball to put the play in motion, and sometimes you got that big guy on your nose. you got sometimes where he's coming at you at an angle. It's a difficult job for him to snap the ball and then execute his block. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. Yeah, I don't think this is the script they had in mind for their opening drive. This is third and long. Now Stidham. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. DeAndre Carter back deep. It'll be a 44-yard punt, six on the return. And it'll be Raiders football first and 10. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. And bringing them out is the pocket passer from Purdue, rookie Aiden O'Connell. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment. Running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. 
They run on first down as they get about three. Second and seven, forthcoming. Well, there's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Throwing on second down, here's O'Connell. And they're not able to hook up there, incomplete. We talk all the time about playmakers on offense, but let's face it, there are plenty of playmakers on defense, too. I think we just saw an example of one, didn't we? Not forcing that incompletion. Yeah, he's a great corner. They got a couple of them on that side of the football. They head to the line, facing a third and seven, following the incompletion on second down. And O'Connell now to throw. That will take it in by Adams. And he is going to have the Raiders first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot. So you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. Throwing on first down, O'Connell. And his throw is incomplete. Looking for Michael Mayer on the play, but it'll be second down. Sticking to the air with O'Connell here. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now it's O'Connell. And he'll be brought down at the 27. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely, as one of the better coaches in the league always tells me. On offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. Now, a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. They were maybe hoping for a little bit of a back shoulder fade there, and that's a play that's been in vogue the last few years in all aspects of football. But they couldn't get the hook up there. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Play action, now O'Connell. He hits Adams, complete. And he will reach the five-yard line before going out of bounds. A well-executed 22-yard gain. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game. And nice pass there. And now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner. And that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not cash in. They've got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. And this is caught. Touchdown, Raiders. Jacoby Myers, a five-yard touchdown. And the Raiders are on the board first here this afternoon. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stop it. And we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. Extra point by Carlson. Up and good. The score seven nothing.
touchdown ready to kick it away is Carlson. From his end zone Marvin Mims. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. So now the second drive offensively coming up for the Denver Broncos. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Nine yards is the pick up there. They'll have a second and one. What a way to start a drive. An excellent run, a tone setter, and now if you want to take a shot on second down and go play action and make it look like the same exact play and throw it over the top, you can do so because you've established the run in a big way. Stidham's throw here into the hands of the receiver, Judy. And Judy's going to have a Broncos first down as the tackle made up around the 33-yard line. Now it's Stidham. He'll find Sutton on the right side complete. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag. Because when you do, you can just put the ball on it and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. They go play action with Stidham. That's caught. It's Marvin Mims. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 41-yard line. That one good for 16 as the drive continues. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 41. Now it's Stidham. And this will be well too low for him to bring in. It's incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now a give up the middle to Williams. Five yards. Now it's third and five. The kick by Lutz is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point or, in this case, a field goal. Field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense. 
Well, this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do, so I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Second down, Jacobs once more. And from the 25, they worked this to the 29, a gain of four. Here is third down and four. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. And this is going to be incomplete. Partner, we've got ourselves a ball game, and those guys on defense, they came to play. Slipped up on their first series, but they're definitely settling in now and letting it be known that points won't come so easy again. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. And Marvin Mims deep for Denver. Forty-five yards, that's what the punt goes for. Five on the return. And the Broncos take over. First down and ten. And Denver getting set to take the field. Last time out, you remember their drive stall, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get them three. Now here they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them, but I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. Ball on the 30 now. Here's second and nine. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Now a first down carry. It's Williams. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Play action. It's Stidham. He'll air this one out for Mims. And this is dropped. Oh, it's incomplete. He had a big gainer in his sights, but he could not reel it in. And this was a little bit of the knock on him coming out of college. Sometimes the concentration can wander a bit. This should have been a big play, but somehow he's not able to corral it. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. Riley Dixon now to put it away. 46 on his first kick. This one in that neighborhood as well. And that'll hit at the 5 and go into the end zone for a touchback. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming.
On the ground, it's Jacobs to start the drive. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. Now a quick throw out wide to Myers. Pulling a gain of three on the play. And now it's third and four. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. O'Connell from the gun on third down. The open man here, Renfro. And he is going to have the Raiders first down, although it doesn't appear to be by much. He needed four, and he got four on third down. This is a nice job of just taking what the defense is going to give you on third down. You're not looking for a big play downfield. You just want to find something that can get you past the marker. They found it, and were able to keep the drive moving. Here's Jacobs on first and ten. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. That good for 19 and a first down. Back to throw, O'Connell. They swing that out wide to Jacobs. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. So no gain on the play. And it's second down. Well, he caught it right at the line of scrimmage. And before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch. And most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move them all over the place to try and find good matchups, and they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Throwing, O'Connell. a sack. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. The lessons will continue of this rookie. He's got to learn how to read situations just a little bit better. That far behind the line, he's got to find a way to get rid of the football and not take the sack, whether it's with his legs or just throwing it away. Here's A.J. Cole now to punt this one away. This first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Broncos football as we begin quarter number two. As they get set to start their drive with a first and ten. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Well, that's an excellent way to get the pass rush activated. The first sack of the game for them comes on the first play of the drive, and it makes it very tough for the opponent to pick up a first down now, playing behind the sticks. Well, they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Here's Stidham. This one swung out to Williams. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. We'll see what they have drawn up here a little bit behind the line. 12 yards 
needed to gain a first down. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. 33 yards that time. And that one hurts defensively. They force him into third and long, had the advantage, yet they give up the big play right there. Yeah, their offense was already warming up on the sideline, ready to come out. So much for that three and out. So the line of scrimmage all the way up to midfield now as they've got it first and ten. In motion left here, one of their tight ends. Up the middle, it's Williams. Divine Diablo there to make the stop. From the 46, here's second down and five. They run it again with Williams. And good space to operate there as he takes this down inside the 35-yard line. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. They try the left side here with Williams. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Marcus Epps there on the tackle. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. Open man left side, it's a tight end man hurts. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Well, that was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's gonna bring up third down. The Broncos on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This will be third and six. Out of the gun, Stidham. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. Seems as if the passing attack's starting to heat up a little bit here in the second quarter. You can sense and you can see the momentum because now they're reading their patterns downfield, they're understanding the coverages, and they're finding the open holes in the defense. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now a 10th carry, here's Williams. And he'll get this one down to about the 10 yard line. Credited with a one yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now a handoff, here's Williams. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. Only gets three yards there on the heels of the one yard pickup. Sets up third and six. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. And movement by one of the Broncos up front and in comes the flag. And they'll accept that penalty. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. To throw is Stidham. And he'll go down, brought down at the 20 yard line. Tyree Wilson using that athletic ability to make the play. Well, he was really focused downfield, but there was really no viable options. The coverage was too good. And the defense really quickened the tempo of that play with their pass rush because there was nowhere for him to go with the football. 
The only place he ended up, down on the ground. Now Lutz for the field goal try. From the left hash, this from 37. The kick by Lutz is good. And they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. So the margin shrinks a bit as back-to-back -back drives here for him in with field goals. Yeah, we know no one's turning down three, especially in the first half, but you've got to finish these drives in the end zone. That's got to be a priority. Nice to have a reliable kicker, but outside of his agent, you know you'd rather him kick one-pointers instead of three-pointers. the made field goal lets to kick it away no return here for Carter and this will be a touchback now the Vegas offense heading back out there no points last time out they were forced to punt if you remember but no time to dwell on that they've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here first and ten as this new drive starts First down throw, O'Connell. A quick throw there is incomplete. But Michael Mayer, his intended receiver, but it's going to be second down. Jacob's going to try the middle. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. Fakes the handoff. Now O'Connell to throw. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Baron Browning able to get him down for a loss of 11. And it brings up fourth down. He saw the pressure and he got out, but he never got upfield. And the defense, they took full advantage of a rookie mistake there. They were able to add a big loss on the sack. Here's A.J. Cole now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a fair catch call for and made just inside the 35-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Denver Broncos back out there. Former Tar Heel Javante Williams, we shine the spotlight on him. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times, but as you pointed out, use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, they certainly got dented with that first down run, so now they've got to be back on their heels a little bit as a defense. Second and six. Now Stidham. He'll find his tight end. It's Adam Troutman. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations. But a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route? Definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Stidham's throw taken in by Sutton. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down.
Stidham, he's going to keep it on the option. And holding it may be the wrong decision as he stopped in the backfield. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. They'll hand it off now, Williams. And a short gain down to about the 33. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. A third field goal in the first half, not what they're looking for as they come up on third down. Stidham. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. The Raider defense strong on that one in coverage, and now it's fourth. Putting pressure on the guy throwing the football is always good, but when you can couple that with contact on him that leads to an incompletion, as we just saw there, that's winning football. Now Lutz for the field goal try. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. The kick by Lutz is good, and they jump back in front here. It's 9-7. So that's a seven-play drive that ultimately stalls out there at the end. Now, things were a little leaky in the beginning of that drive, weren't they? But how about the front seven? As they got closer to their goal line, things stiffened a little bit, forced the field goal. Field goal, Lutz to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The Raiders heading out to take over. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs, and not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Second and seven from the 20. Off the play fake. O'Connell. He'll let this go for Adams. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So a costly penalty yardage-wise is that'll move the football down to the spot of the foul. And what the officials are looking for in these situations, whether you're playing the man or the ball, and if you're playing the man, you get a lot less leeway in terms of what's going to happen at the end of the play. But if you're looking for the football, it's less likely to draw the flag. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. And O'Connell now to throw. That's to the Notre Dame man, Michael Mayer. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. Here's O'Connell. Oh, trying to get that to Adams, but that's intercepted. And the Broncos are going to take over at their own two-yard line. And as we've seen, points have been precious so far, and they just threw something away on that snap. And look, let's face it, as we advance further into this game, 
that play will be on the minds of everyone who's watching it. They wonder if this is the turning point. Is this the spot where those points were given away? It could cost them a ball game. Denver's offense now set to go. They take over here following the interception. That's the good news. The tough spot is the spot that they're in. That's inside the five in the shadow of their own goalposts here. First and ten. They begin the drive with Williams. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, not a game that you're going to go crazy about, but when you start at your own two-yard line, any type of space is good for the offensive guys. Yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it. Now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. They work now on second and nine. Again, it's Williams. Powers through. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 20. 17 yards for the Broncos there as they've got themselves a first down. Now the Broncos going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. First and ten, it's Stidham. And he will find his man Sutton, that's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But still, at some point in the game, you probably have to make some contested catches, right? Sometimes you have to go up and beat a defender for the football. He has that in his arsenal as well. Sure. It's caught inside the 25. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Give him 32 on the play. I think this defense was still trying to recover from that last play, so you wonder if they were ready for this one. You have to imagine their defensive coaches are yelling at them to get focused because if they don't, more plays like that will result in giving up points. So the big play gets them all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. Now it's Stidham. Open man, he completes it to Judy. Touchdown, Broncos! Jerry Judy as the first half is winding down. And the Broncos will extend their lead here just before halftime. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. What I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half. And that'll give us momentum going into the second half. Give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Lutz with the extra point, and that makes this a nine-point game. So that drive spanned five plays, and it ends with a Denver touchdown. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And able to get this out to the 25. The Los 
Las Vegas offense ready to start this next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. So we come upon halftime with nine points separating these two teams. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone, to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This okay, has certainly Coach, been a fun one to watch to you so far. The gang we knew Orlando this was going to be a battle. We, welcome we have not been back disappointed. In for quarter number this three. is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side can play mistake-free football the rest of the way. are going to have it first and they trail here as we get back to it in this third quarter of action and Carter deciding not to bring this one out out comes the Raiders offense they'll go on offense first to start quarter number three Charles it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room haven't really been able to get anything going offensively virtually nothing in the ground attack either so certainly something has to change here in quarter three and I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well and they've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. No gain on the play there. Second down. Off the play fake, here's O'Connell. Open man right side, Myers. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Two catches in the first half, now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. And that's one of the better plays we've seen this offense put together so far. They haven't been able to get on track much at all. But listen, they're only down a couple of scores with the rest of this quarter, and the entire fourth remaining, so stranger things have happened. Now a give to Jacobs running right. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Holding offense. So that time they get the tight end on the hold. Normally he's a pretty good run blocker, but this time he just didn't get his arms extended and let go quickly enough. The flag came out as a result. Here's O'Connell looking to throw it. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. O'Connell working from the gun. And his throw is going to be incomplete. A well, partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To the air again with O'Connell. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. I'd say it's not panic time yet, but let's be honest about it. Empty possession here, not what you're looking for when you're down a couple of scores. Absolutely not. Trying to start the second half off on the right foot. Unfortunately, going to give the ball up. Here's A.J. Cole now, standing just about on his own goal line. 
He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36 yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. And the focus shifts back to Jerry Judy and his Bronco teammates. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once, but boy, he can explode at any moment. And when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, it, you do. It you get you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. 87 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. This second and four. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. First down, Broncos. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. A gain of 13 yards, and the Broncos first down. On the counter, here's Williams. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. And he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. That's why the guy with the headsets is down there. All right, they know what they're doing because they got stuffed on a running plan first down. And I think myself and probably the fans were saying, throw the football in this situation. But he knew what he was doing, called another run, and now they've got third and short. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. A give to Williams running right. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. It's caught on the right side, Williams. And here he'll get it down to the seven. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. And that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Marvin Mims, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. They'll look to run for it with Williams. And he will get into the end zone to bump the lead up to three scores.
After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. No return here for Carter, and this will be a touchback. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. A give, it's Jacobs off the option. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Not a huge play, but I think they're more than happy with how it turned out. Don't be surprised to see them revisit that call because there was a lane there for more than just five yards. Put it in your back pocket and break it out when you need it later. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. Out of the shotgun, here's O'Connell toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. At this point in the game, in the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now O'Connell. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. The 21 yards there as they can burn on third. Normally on third down and short yardage, you're thinking to throw to your tight end. It's just going to be a simple chain mover. But this time they let him roam down the field, and a nice dart picks up the first down and then some. Here's Jacobs from the gun. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Raiders first down. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Second and seven, operating from the 34. And they go play action here with O'Connell. That's caught by Myers. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. 23 yards to pick up there. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. O'Connell now off the bootleg. That is incomplete. I have a few questions about that throw because to me, there just wasn't a lot there. I thought he tried to do a little bit too much, almost tried to will a receiver open when there was no chance he was going to be. Nice job by the linebacker being all over that one and knocking it away. Second and 10. Back to the running game with Jacobs. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Play action. Now O'Connell. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Baron Browning able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Oh, you can just see it in their body language. They're starting to see victory on the horizon now. And if it comes to fruition, they got to give a game ball to the front seven. Defensive line has taken charge and controlled this game. Face a challenge of stopping this opposing offense, and they've done so with ease. 
Fourth down, and on comes the Raider kicker, Daniel Carlson. This will be, let's see, 38 yards out. Carlson able to put this one through, and that will close the gap down to 14. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point, or in this case, a field goal. this across the 20 but not much further as he's dropped at the 23 yard line and the football going back over to the Denver Broncos and this drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense they were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field and frankly it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated they both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he will find his way forward to about the 23-yard line. Nate Hobbs there to bring him down. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. From the 23, here's the second down and nine. They'll stay on the ground with Williams. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 141 yards rushing now for the ball game on 24 carries. So right now what I'm seeing, I'm seeing an offense is just firing off the ball a lot quicker than they can react. And not only that, they're sustaining the blocks too. I'm seeing guys get six, seven yards downfield before there's even a hint of contact. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he's gonna take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. This a second and seven from the 37. They'll run out of the gun here, Williams. A solid stiff arm get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and 10. Up the middle, it's Williams. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. And they'll come up second and seven. Stidham, he's going to keep it on the option. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Las Vegas. Welcome back, everybody. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. Stidham. That is caught. And he will have a Broncos first down by about three yards or so as they wind up getting seven there on third and four. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Stidham from the shotgun. Open man is the tight end, Troutman. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 23 yards on the play. And the 
Still throwing the football here, even with the big lead. Yeah, I know you and I came up in a different era, and we think about sportsmanship and all that. Other people think about fantasy points and getting their numbers. <laughs> That's all they care about right now. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. They go back to the ground with Williams. And he's eaten up at the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten a yard down to the 16. Second and nine at the 16-yard line. Now second and nine. They run it again with Williams. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. This will be a loss of three, and now a much tougher third down looming. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long, he's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. He lost two, and it brings up fourth. Well, they certainly didn't appear to be fired up about their options throwing the football. So, to me, this seems like a case of just kind of taking their medicine there, run the ball, see if they could pick up something. Instead, they were thrown for a loss. The kick by Lutz is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So with that, you figure, yeah, this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Now, aren't I, though? Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The Las Vegas' offense back out there, ready to go. And the complexion of this one has really changed a fair amount. That last field goal makes it a three-score game, so they need points in a hurry with time dwindling in the fourth quarter. O'Connell on first and 10. Open man, that's Renfro. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. It's another first down as this time they get an even 20. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where his coaches... You're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. 
O'Connell from the gun on third down. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 18. Give them 22 there on the third down conversion. And he went in route there from the slot for the completion. Love how he runs his routes because it's all setting up your defender. Give him a little something one way, take it the other way. Head and shoulder fake. Sometimes you make one step to the outside, then break it inside. Really well run route. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They will run out of the gun with Jacobs. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Pat Sertan getting down from his corner spot to make that play. Continues to be a struggle for this offense and this home crowd. They're growing a little restless here in the second half. And I think they've just got to look at how they're trying to move the football. Yeah, you want to run it, but maybe you spread it out, maybe some swing passes that can take the place of runs and give you a little more space. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. The 71 yards rushing for him now to this point. The offense on third down, they've hit on half of them, five for 10. Here it's third and two. Now it's O'Connell. That ball nearly intercepted, but he could not hang on. Oh, pick there certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least it'll be fourth down. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you... And he's brought down. Can't do anything with a football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. The Raiders try it on fourth down, but to no avail. And the Broncos will take over on downs. Uh, the D brought the house, they called the blitz, and they get to the quarterback overwhelming the O-line. And I would love to know, and we'll find out later on, was that called before the play, or did they audible into it? Because defenses change plays as well as offenses. Sometimes they get the set they want, they go right to the blitz, and in this case, they nailed it. Got right to the quarterback, no chance on that fourth down. They start to drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Tackle made at the 21-yard line. A gain of four. It's now second and six. Now a second and six. And motion left goes a tight end. Williams going to get it again on second down. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. And it's third down. Now we give up the middle to Williams. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. That'll back him up two yards and also bring up fourth. The run defense, they have been porous at times today, but not that last go around. No, they really tightened it up, didn't they? They finally got themselves a win because all game long we've seen them get gashed. This time they played their responsibilities, played their keys, and made a nice stop. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And the Raiders will take over now first and 10. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Start, 
from the shotgun. O'Connell. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Multiple defenders get to him there, and that is the sixth time he's been sacked in this ball game. I don't know what else can be said about this pass rush. They have been sensational. CD, that is now six sacks for them. And how many times do we talk to offensive coordinators and they say a sack is a result of everyone on offense not doing their job? But let's be honest about this one. This is the offensive line unable to counter the pass rush. They've been teeing off all game long. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Back to throw, O'Connell. Looking deep for Adams. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one, weren't able to do so. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Trying to get it to Adams, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Another solid game-changing play for this defense with the interception. At this point, though, I don't know that it's game-changing. I mean, they've got this one in firm control. And you always hear about, you know, those stories about someone left their game plan behind and maybe you benefit from it. I'm not going to say that that happened, but they certainly have appeared on defense to be a step ahead this entire game. Guys are always in the right spot in order to make a play. The offense has had its moments, too. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. On the ground, this is Williams. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. This is second and eight. Now Williams running left. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. Now the Raiders call on a nickel set here for third down. Again, it's Williams. Yeah, this is only going to be a gain of two. He needed three. It's fourth and one. This team doesn't mind running the ball in any situation, and I thought he was going to get the first down the way the play developed, but the defense closed in and stopped him just about a yard short. Now Lutz for the field goal try. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. The kick by Lutz is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So they got the turnover started with great field position, but in the end, the defense able to hold firm, and they only get three out of it. And I like what you said right there, that defense able to hold firm, backed up into the shadow of their own end zone. Goalpost right behind them. They had to make sure they didn't give up the six. And boy, they came through in a big way. To them, even though they gave up three, that's a win for their side. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. And now here come the Raiders. So now, Charles, this drive, maybe a touch more important, trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, Frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself 
And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked off by Alex Singleton. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. But here in the fourth quarter, defensively, you know that you're just going to blanket the field with defensive backs and say, OK, take your best shot. And that time, it's intercepted. And we've often seen teams go into the prevent early, way too early. And sometimes they get too soft in their coverages. But not in this case. They understood the situation and played it with the proper aggression. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. They try the left side here with Williams. Down to the 22-yard line. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. Now a second down and six. Now a handoff. Here's Williams. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. A five-yard pickup on the play, and it's third down. Let's go! They'll hand it off now, Williams. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team is going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. Williams. He will push his way down to about the 14. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. So they can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. So this one will wind up a Denver victory. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well, here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle. Go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them this one is now planted. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say so long from Las Vegas.